What did you rethink in February, March of 2020 as a leader and is carrying over into Limflow right now as you continue to build out the team, whatever continent it's on? Yeah, well, I mean, as I said, we were pretty virtual mm -hmm. to start with. I mean, I think we all had that like, oh my God moment, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, uh, and, and had to, one, we were in the middle of just starting our US Pivotal trial. So, uh, and this raises all kinds of questions for field, field clinical support. How are we gonna get there? Uh, how are we gonna handle some of the ethical questions of, you know, people are traveling around in the middle of a pandemic, you know, I mean, ultimately, uh, the company has to decide how it's gonna manage, you know, asking people to do Mm -hmm. do that, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, the patient problem isn't going away. And in fact, the, uh, the uh, uh, CMS came, came out and the FDA came out and said, there are four categories of procedures that are uh, uh, non-elective and need to continue. So trauma, mm -hmm. sure, obviously, transplant, mm -hmm. emergent cardiac, mm -hmm. right, and limb salvage. Hmm. Wow. So, you know, we were one of the four, and we were like, wow, that really brings it home, doesn't it? Because you don't want someone losing their limb, going into the ICU for days and days in the middle of the pandemic, getting booted out into uh, into rehab facility, and 100% of patients who get a major amputation go to rehab. So they were like, this has to be done. It's not, it's not elective, right? which meant that we could continue our clinical trial. And we, d we enrolled the clinical trial throughout the pandemic. We reforecast on March 4th uh, for the next year, for 12 months, and we hit our number within two weeks. Wow. Like, a year later, we were two weeks late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> not bad given the amount. Not, not bad given not the, the, bad the, given the <laughs> amount of like head scratching, banging sure. uh, that went on of me and Thomas sitting there like. What? But what do you attribute that to? That's not luck. Well, uh, the team got out there. I mean, the te our team went out there and knew how serious it was for our patients. And we have a, a inside the company, we talk about no limb left behind. So, you know, we're not gonna let it go. Mm. You know, we're if we can get there, you know, whether we're up in New Hampshire doing cases and in, in the in the snow and uh, got some funny stories of digging out the car and so, you know going to the case and there's like three feet of snow on top of the car after the case and uh, you know getting where we need to be to help the patient I think uh, I think is key. So the commitment of those uh, 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 our team to get out there and even when I mean it's hard people leave they could be picking up the virus they're bringing home i mean it's uh, there's some real moments and uh and i was very clear i said look anybody who doesn't feel comfortable doing it you know doesn't need to do it yeah. right like it's i can't ask you to do it you know i would get out there if i could but i was stuck in europe but you don't have to do it mm -hmm. and they all stepped up and uh and i think the results show it we saved a lot of limbs mm -hmm. uh and uh, i think uh and the physicians of course you know we had you know, chief of surgery, right? Top guys in the field consenting their own patients, right? Because the, you know, research department's either been let go or is, is at home. So it was a combination of everybody realizing really, I mean, it's the manifestation of unmet need, mm -hmm. right? If you mm -hmm. see the community and your people coming out for that. <laughs>